Hi, this is Pat Moorhead, and we are back for another 6-5 in the booth. It's a virtual one because obviously we're not in a booth, but we are here with my co-host, Daniel Newman. How are you doing, my friend? Pat, it's good to virtually be at RSA this year. You know security is big. It's a huge topic, and it's been a major focus, especially with all the wobbles in the economy, and companies are trying to figure out how do we secure our data, how do we get our customers feeling safe, and with all the advancements in AI, adding all the new complexities, Pat, I love this topic. Let's dive in and introduce our guests from IBM. Uh, Ray and Michael, welcome to the show. First time guests. Happy to be here, Pat and Dan. Yeah, thank you to me. Happy to be here. Happy yeah, to we be do, here. Uh, yeah, we have a lot of, uh, we uh, do a lot of interviews with some great uh, IBM folks and uh, we're really excited to to do some around RSA and security, talking about all the things that IBM is doing, but I think more importantly, getting uh, their point of view on some of the biggest discussions out there about security. So, Ray, why don't I start off with you? Uh, we want to focus this one on, on, on being quantum safe. So, <laughs> you know, let's dive right in with that question. What does it mean to be quantum safe? What does quantum safe really mean? So to, to address this challenge, standards bodies, industry uh, consortiums and academia have been working on novel approaches. Obviously, IBM has been doing that as well to develop algorithms that are resistant to future attacks that could be launched from quantum computers. These algorithms are known as quantum safe cryptography or post-quantum cryptography or quantum resistant cryptography. That is, cryptographic algorithms that run on classical compute resources and are resistant to currently known classical and quantum computing approaches. So to be quantum safe, an application, product, or service must implement these quantum safe cryptography using a set of public key encryption or digital signature approaches that have been standardized, for example, by organizations like NIST, right? So to be crisp, Quantum safe refers to the protection of classical computers from future quantum computers that are capable of ca breaking um, current day encryption. Can, can you just shine a light on why do we, why is this important now? Why, why do we need it? I mean, do we actually have risks today, even though we don't even have a quantum computer that can break this cryptography? It's a, it's a great question, uh, Pat. Um, one that that is often in the minds of of many of our clients, right? So, to pick up or to build on top of what what I just talked about, right? Quantum computing holds immense potential for computing, right? But it, it's also posing a threat in that um, it is theoretically possible right now that using a quantum computer we can break industry standard encryption such as RSA. And this is possible by the implementation of Shor's algorithm, right, which solves prime factorization in a pretty novel way on a powerful enough quantum computer. So that, therein lies the core of the problem, right? The prime factorization solves, uh, can be solved quickly in, uh, class, in, in quantum computing, whereas in classical computing, it takes thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of years to solve that. So that is the problem statement. So if you say, so wait a minute, I get it. However, we don't have such a quantum computer today, so why worry about it right now? The simple reason is that there is a potential that motivated bad actors may be harvesting and storing the data today in order to decrypt once such a quantum computer with sufficient scale and maturity becomes available. This is fondly referred to as harvest now and decrypt later, right? This is a problem that exists that is unique uh, to, to quantum computing or, or this post-quantum cryptography. In addition, based on what we have seen our clients tell us and based on our experience as well, it takes anywhere from five to seven years, this is an optimistic estimate, to upgrade current day cryptography to the new uh, quantum state cryptography, quantum safe cryptography, right? Th there is simply a lot of work to be done. So the planning needs to begin now. So to go back to your question of what are the risks 
today. The risks today are primarily this harvest now and decrypt later. And then the challenge that if you don't start today, you're going to find that you're quickly running out of runway uh, to solve this problem. But I also don't want to create simply a gloom and doom story here. So there is light at the end of the tunnel, right? And that is why world's leading quantum cryptography experts at IBM like Mike and, and others have been working for years on quantum safe cryptography, which will which will help us establish new, you know, uh, new security standards around these new algorithms. So what we tell our clients to address uh, these risks is that while you prepare for the promise and the risk of quantum computing, you got to be prepared to handle some of these challenges. And so begin planning now so that we are not caught without uh, enough runway to address the risks I just talked about. So IBM has been leading a lot of discussions around quantum, has definitely been investing in a really significant way. Uh, it's done a good job of sort of telling the entanglement story of how classical and quantum compute is, is converging. And, and, and Ray, you answered the question about well, what does it mean to be quantum safe? Mm -hmm. But Mike, I want to pivot over to you now and ask you the question is, okay, well then explain quantum safe cryptography and what it is uh, on, the, on the heels of everything Ray just said. Okay, good question. Um, Obviously, uh, with a name like quantum safe, there can be a lot of confusion into what that actually means. If it has the quantum word in there, then a lot of people think, oh, then you need some quantum effects to actually, uh, or a quantum computer to run these new algorithms. That's not the case. So one way to look at this is simply, it's, it's a new generation of cryptography um, that is safe against everything we know about quantum computers. So, so we at IBM, we call it quantum safe cryptography. Um, other people like NIST call it post-quantum. Others still call it um, quantum resistant. So there's a lot of ter names for uh, for what it actually is. But it, the key point is it doesn't need any quantum um, machinery in order to run this stuff. So you can just replace what we have today with this new cryptography. So that's, that's the easiest way to look at it. It's just new cryptography. And why is it new? And um, well, actually, do you know how old the crypto is that we've been using for, you know, it's 50 years old. So, so Diffie Hellman, so Diffie and Hellman came up with this scheme for key exchange 50 years ago. And much of the cryptography um, since then have been based on similar mathematical problems. Um, some of the things that, uh, that the Ray has, uh, has, has, has talked about. And we know that quantum computers, they're very good at some things, they're very bad at other things. So they're very good at solving the problem that all of the cryptography today is based on. But actually, they're, very, they're not very good at solving problems in other maths areas, maths areas such as lattice cryptography or multivariate cryptography. So what we mean by quantum safe cryptography are um, it's cryptography based on mathematical problems that um, we know quantum computers are not good at. So um, New areas of maths. It's not going to be fun for a lot of people. Maths is not everyone's favorite subject. Um, but uh, the, the other thing I think which is really important to get across here is that it's not only safe against future quantum uh, computers, but it's also safe against all of the attacks that we know that we know today. So not only is it better designed, better verified, it's 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 created in such a way that there are no back doors by anybody that that, that uh, is interested in putting back doors into this stuff. So it's just modern, new cryptography based on uh, super new, uh, well not super new, but the mathematical problems that we know quantum computers are not good at. Okay, if this is so good, are you using it yourself? Is IBM using this technology in its own solutions? Absolutely, yes. And, and already since some years, we started, actually we started this uh, this whole effort in 2015. So an awful long time ago. So it's really, um, uh, it's really not very new for us. And one of the first things we did after we designed these algorithms is really evaluate what it, uh, how easy they are to, to implement and then to start to uh, protect some of our own systems. So for example, um, our tape drives, encrypted tape drives, might seem like a funny target, but those tape drives are on the shelves for 30 years. So, so we have a kind of a time horizon 
where we need to protect the data on those tape drives for 30 years, which means actually it's an obvious candidate for, for using um, uh, a combination of the cryptography that we use today plus quantum safe cryptography. So we started out with tape drives. Since then, we have um, two releases of our mainframe. There was a large uh, Z16 release uh, last year, which not only offers the algorithms for people to, 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 to use, it also protects itself using those algorithms. So it's really the first quantum safe platform. Also on IBM Cloud. So you know, there's, there's, there's actually two reasons for using it. Um, it's not just that it is the future cryptography that is safe uh, for the next decades. Um, it is actually faster than the crypto that we're using today. So there's also a lot of misunderstanding and, and uh, let's say, incorrect information flying around that these new, these new algorithms are actually um, very difficult to use and very large. That's really not the case. These algorithms are, are now faster than, the, than anything that we have uh, used to date. So, so lots of good reasons um, for, for implementing this stuff and lots of um, examples of where we have implemented and right now actually we're taking all of that know-how that we've generated in um, making our systems quantum safe and we're actually making that know-how uh, available to 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 our clients that, uh, that it's a nice segue to the to the next question gentlemen quantum quantum safe <clears throat> quantum as a whole is one of those things that everyone's like waiting for when does this become market generally available and we're starting to see these use cases come out so how does IBM envision, you know, governments and large enterprises using uh, this quantum safe cryptography technology? Our approach to making these applications, products and, and services quantum safe, whether it be a government client or a commercial client, it has actually three simple steps, right? One is discover, then we call it observe and then transform. Discover is about understanding what do I currently have as my cryptography inventory? Where is it being used? So knowing how big the breadbasket is. That's what we you know, call as the discover. And we have a set of technologies that we are calling Explorer that drives that aspect of discovery. The next is observe where we look at root cause and migration remediation recommendations and draw some insights from what we just discovered so that we can begin to see how best to go about and address them, not just in a static manner, but also in, in a real time uh, manner as well. And these technology and the technologies that support these, we call as advisor. And then the last step is transform where we actually upgrade existing you know, cryptography to be quantum safe. And uh, you, know, you can have, drop-in replacements for cryptography or some re-architecture where needed and, and supporting um, you know, best practice-based approaches that will help realize this. this. These set of technologies are what we call remediator. I think, I think one point I'd like to, to, to mention is that it, it's not just about the journey to quantum safe. There are other things which are really important, such that industries and government end up in a better place when it comes to cybersecurity. And these are things like uh, secure software supply chain. So that's a, a, another White House uh, mandate, for example. So some of the things that we've been looking at is how you can extend software bills of materials, for example, with um, cryptographic assets. So you kind of, the approach is to align, let's say, the needs of the journey to becoming quantum safe with other things that organizations need to be doing at the same time. So, so um, this also in the in the open source community. So we've developed a, a standard for cryptographic bills of materials, made this available as a as an open source um, effort, and this is being consumed now at a number of open source um, efforts. So it's a combination, I think, of standards where it makes sense plus um, differentiated differentiated te te technology, and and then the technology you need. I think it's very dependent on the sort of company you are. Some companies are really very advanced and modern, and um, you can you can take one approach. Other companies are a little bit more, I would say, traditional in what they do. So at the end of the day, you need the right portfolio of technologies. Um, these we've developed uh, in, internally, and where it makes sense, we've uh, we've uh, made these available uh, in, for, to the open source. So, Mike, in in quantum and in security, it really does take a take a village. Uh, of of companies to be working together. 
Um, can you talk a little bit about that? And maybe also, are there are there customers actually using IBM Quantum Safe technologies today? Yeah, maybe, maybe I take a stab at that because you're absolutely right. So, so if you look, there are things which a company can do by itself. They can sort of understand where and how they use cryptography and maybe they develop themselves that, so they have things in their own hands, but maybe they buy things from suppliers. So there, hmm, if you now have to start looking at your supplier, uh, your, your supply chain, understand what you're going to ask your, your suppliers to do, how you're going to make sure that these kind of work together with what you're doing. And then there's a third dimension, and this is ecosystems. So there are things like the telco industry or the financial industry, where there are very large ecosystems for the standards. Uh, maybe they are um, global ecosystems. So there's different legislations about the world. So there's certain things you need to be doing at the ecosystem level. So one of those, um, for example, is I think it's well documented is the work we've been doing at the GSMA um, uh, standards organization around uh, mobile uh, mobile networks, and that is um, to help educate an ecosystem such that it can go then to all its um, all the parts of that ecosystem and then have a, a, a kind of a, a joined up um, strategy how to um, how to end up in a good place rather than let things develop by themselves. And, uh, and end up in a very bad place when it comes to very fragmented um, uh, technology solutions. So we are virtually here at, at RSA, and it's been great having this conversation. I think it sounds like the advancements are happening very quickly, that the opportunity around quantum safe and quantum safe encryption is something that, you know, public sector, government, large enterprise, and eventually every company that has uh, important data to protect will need to be considering. Mike, for those here at RSA, what would you say is the big quantum safe takeaway that you want them to leave the show with? Okay. I think for me, the most important takeaway is awareness and strategy. It's a journey and you can make that journey very difficult. Um, by not thinking about it, not really, let's say we have, um, for example, clients that say, oh, we just leave it to the ecosystem, it'll be okay. That's really not the case. So awareness and creating a very clear strategy about how you're gonna address this journey. This will save an awful lot of uh, pain and complexity and, and take you on a good path. And you wanna be on the good path and not a path, uh, not the alternative bad path, I think. So uh, awareness and strategy. Well, guys, this is some exciting stuff. And if the audience wasn't aware of crypto, uh, quantum safe cryptography algorithms, I'm sure they are today. And I think the, the biggest mind blower, you know, to me is, is the, the importance of it today, which is I can come in today, take this data that's encrypted using technologies that can't be broken today, but hey, in three years, uh, once the technology is, is where it needs to be, uh, I can then apply that and, and get access to all the proprietary data. And just because the data is not fresh doesn't mean that it's not valuable. Things like intellectual property, mm -hmm. as an example, credit card numbers, social security numbers, driver's license numbers. Those are important, timeless pieces of information that hackers can exploit and, and make money on. But I uh, want to appreciate uh, Mike, thank you so much, uh, and Ray, for coming on the show. Uh, and have a good time at, at, at RSA. We'll be, we'll be cheering you on from the sidelines. I appreciate that, Pat and Dan. I enjoyed it very much. I'm sure Mike did as well. So thanks again. This was excellent. Thank you for the opportunity. So much good stuff in there, Pat. I see so many nice ties to the conversations we have about IBM Z, by the way. All right. Yeah. So... We've got to wrap this up, though. Uh, really appreciate everybody that tuned in today. Ray, Mike, you've been great guests. Pat, we love this topic. Security is big. It's in focus. It's in vogue. And I don't see that changing anytime soon. If you if you enjoyed what you saw today, though, hit that subscribe button. Join us for all of our 6-5 episodes here at RSA and beyond. But for this episode, for Patrick and myself, it's time to say goodbye. We'll see you all later. <laughs>